Good evening and welcome to the Next Gen Genealogy Network uh, Education Hangout for October. My name is Shannon Combs Bennett. I'm very excited to be here again with you this month. Uh, this month we're going to be talking with uh, two guest panelists. Yay, I'm not alone! <laughs> um, all about cemetery research and our experience and to give you guys some advice. Uh, hopefully it will be about a half an hour long so it's not too much. And uh, who wants to go first? Jen, you want to introduce yourself first? Sure, I'd love to. Um, thanks, Shannon. My name is Jen Baldwin. I'm the co chair of the Next Gen Genealogy Network and a professional genealogist. And I work for Find My Past and I volunteer for Preserve the Pensions War of 1812. So raise money for Preserve the Pensions. Whoop. And, um, and I like cemeteries. And I'm a bit of a taphophile, and so is my daughter. Awesome. That's that's great. Hey, new word for those of you who don't know it. You should go look it up. <laughs> yeah, Taffa file. Google it. <laughs> Jerry, are you still with us? Uh oh, I think uh, she looks froze. like she might have froze. Sherry's having some internet connection, so hopefully she'll come back and join us in a few minutes, and then she can introduce her herself to us. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, for those of you who are somewhat new to genealogy, you might be looking at us crazy today. Oh, Sherry, are you back? I'm here. Yay. Would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> you froze for a minute. <laughs> sure. I'm Sherry. I'm Sherry Hudson Passy, and I write for Carolina Girl Genealogy Blog. And uh, that's just me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not just you. <laughs> no, Sherry's awesome. That's right. And everybody should read her blog. Uh. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're very welcome. Well, we were just going to get started. I thought maybe we could talk, each of us tell a little bit about our experience uh, doing cemetery research, what we enjoy about it. Um, and then we could talk about the different websites, books, and resources that are out there. Um, Sherry, do you want to go first? Uh oh. Sure. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> my, am I off again? Nope, you're good. Okay. Um, I take them when I can. Okay. I, I take my kids when I can and um, I, I will say, okay, I'm here. Where are you? Help me find you. Oh. <laughs> and a lot of times they do. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Jen, what about you? <laughs> I think everybody. I really believe that. Um, so my experience with cemeteries. Let's see. I have. Um, I really do, Sherry. I have visited cemeteries in about 20 western states over the course of the last 15 years. Um, so most of my experiences um, are very. I guess modern compared to the East Coast, um, very different in cemetery styles. Mm -hmm. I spent the last five years specifically in Breckenridge, Colorado, um, working with the Breckenridge Heritage Alliance, and I gave and um, also helped them prepare the application for the National Register of Historic Places for our cemetery there to go on the register, and it was approved actually just a couple months ago. So we're pretty excited about that still. Um, that's at Valley Brook Cemetery in Breckenridge. It's my absolute favorite. And, um, I, you know, I belong to several Facebook groups and I read lots of books. And um, I actually had the chance to work with a, a headstone preservationist last summer, not this past summer, but the summer before um, in Valley Brook. And, and he taught me quite a bit, actually, too, about the work that he was doing. So he kind of let me get my hands dirty. And I called him my cemetery Santa Claus because every time I saw him, he would give me more gifts of knowledge. It was fantastic. Um, <laughs> He's a really great guy that came out from Virginia, I think, that we, we found and, and hired to help us do some repair work on um, some stones from a storm about 10 or 15 years ago now that damaged quite a bit of our cemetery. So he's been working on it every summer since then and um, is finally almost done with the list. Um, so I had the chance to kind of shadow him a little bit. 
And then um, I take my daughter, actually, all the time to the cemetery. She's been going to cemeteries with me since she was about six months old. She's now five years, and she likes to look for the headstones with the lambs and the angels. And she's pretty good about cemetery etiquette and kind of knows her way around. And she is now starting to read, so she helps me find the right names um, on the stones. And her and her dad, when my husband come, come, um, they run around and look for the oldest headstone that they can find, and yeah, it's great actually. She's <laughs> and she looks at the wildflowers and the trees, and everything's beautiful. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah. Um, my experience is a little. It's not necessarily as extensive as as uh, the either of yours. Um, I grew up going with my grandmothers to just our family cemeteries in the mm -hmm. town, in the, in the communities where I lived, where they lived, where my family lived, because anyone who's been following my blog or me for a while knows that I'm from Indiana, and uh, <laughs> we didn't really, we haven't really left the state in a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, and last summer, not this summer, but summer of uh, 2013, uh, we went home because I was able to go to FGS at Fort Wayne, and we made it a family road trip. And one of the things that I made my kids do, oh, made, um, was we had a family outing with my parents and my kids and my husband, and we went to some of the other cemeteries that had older ancestors in it. And... Mm -hmm. My kids have a military fascination, so they are the ones who go running around looking for the flags and does it have the official, you know, marker and who could it have been, and that's really their thing. And of course, living out here on the East Coast, um, especially in the Mid-Atlantic, and then when we go, uh, like I've gone up to the New England area to visit, it's a totally different landscape, even from Indiana, of the way um, cemeteries and headstones and what you can find mm -hmm. set up. Uh, last week, actually, was it last? No, it was two weeks ago. Um, we were up in Alexandria, killing some time, and my kids, for the last six years, my oldest, every time we drive by, there's an old national cemetery. One of the, all they have in there, well, 90% of it is Civil War. Oh, wow. There's a few others, you know, it's the standard, and he's mm -hmm. always wanted to stop and go look. So this time we had about an hour to kill before I had to pick up my husband, and we went down there. And what I didn't know was that there were, if I counted correctly, seven other church cemeteries attached to that. Oh, wow. So going back to the 1700s. It's like every little church in Alexandria had a area. <laughs> and it was like the burying ground for the town. Right. And there were tombs and there were beautiful monuments and there were small little headstones. And it was such a wide variety from really old all the way through modern. And the one thing that really struck my kids and I as we were walking through was the people who used the cemetery um, as a thoroughfare <laughs> for oh. work. It was, you know, you walk through the middle of the cemetery because it's in the middle of town. Right. So it, it, it had well-worn paths. Yes. And then the people who used it as a uh, dog park. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, wow. It, you know, when I, when I first moved to Colorado and I started going to the cemetery in Breck, I was taken aback the first time I visited because I didn't realize there was a daycare right across the street. And so in, when they walked to the library, which was just a block away to go to story time, they would go through the cemetery instead of walking down this main road and you know putting the right. kids in a potentially hazardous position. So right. um, yeah, so they would have the um, the play school group or the you know the daycare group would go through the cemetery and it always kind of caught me by surprise but I, I mean we got used to them but right. um, you know and then the you know the regular cemetery visitors would be like why are these kids and I was like oh no no it's fine <laughs> like little three and four years old four year olds <laughs> I have to say that I I've always had a little bit of fascination for old cemeteries and headstones they just they just fascinate me ever since I was a, a child I've always read them read the dates, tried to figure out, you know, in my mind who they might have been. And when I was little, and obviously we're visiting family cemeteries, a lot of the time I was trying to figure out how they were related to me and what they might have been like. So, oh, I have, I have <laughs> a have lurker back here. Here she is. 
getting ready to go to bed. We're talking about how much you like going to cemeteries with mommy. Hey, I've seen yeah. that um. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, <laughs> don't. Yeah. And I'm just like, sorry. I love you. <laughs> okay, shut the door. Um. Sorry about that. Oh, it happens. <laughs> but, like, you know, we have little kids. <laughs> yeah. My thankfully have been in bed for a while, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's later there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's a little bit about our experiences and what we like. And I just, you know, I've taken some classes and I've attended some workshops, but I've never actually done any cemetery restoration. I know you have a little bit, Jen. Have you, Sherry? Oh, did we lose you again? I'm not, not sure. She dropped in and out at one point, so. Okay. Well, maybe she'll come back because I'd yeah. like to hear what she has to say. Yeah, hopefully. Um, so you have cemetery restoration. I've never actually been out and done anything. I, I know the basic etiquette, which is, you know, you don't do anything to the stones that mm -hmm. would harm them. Um, uh, don't, you know, add anything, obviously, like, I know some people like put flour on them sometimes. Yeah. Oh gosh, no, that's awful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and um, you know, in my personal opinion, in terms of actually documenting the information, I I personally feel like with the advancements in digital cameras and the software that we can all have that we have access to, even freeware, you don't have to buy anything necessarily. Even just basic stuff that you can download off the internet. Um, there really isn't any reason anymore, in my opinion, for headstone rubbings. Right. Um, right. I would imagine that there is occasionally a, an off situation where that might come into play, but for the most part, I think most of us are pretty safe with just a, a picture. Yeah, and if you get a, a good one, even if it has shadows on it, it you can do the different, you know, shadowing and lighting mm -hmm. and highlighting at home on your software and it yeah. you know, comes out pretty good. Well, and there's lots of tricks too. I mean, just, um, you know, if you're having a hard time, go at a different time of day so the sun is hitting the stone differently if you can. Um, if I go to a cemetery, I, I'll, I'll admit I have a cemetery bag and it has my tools and, you know, and a pair of gloves in it because a lot of the cemeteries out here are very overgrown and you have to cut away bushes and trees and, and other weeds to actually be able to see the whole thing um, and kind of pull back the plants. There's one right. in particular that has a bush that's almost it's almost completely enveloped in this, you know, overgrown into this bush. So it's if you don't know it's there, you'd easily walk by it. Mm -hmm. um, so I have my little toolkit, but I also have a good a decent sized mirror that I take with me. So I can prop it up against a tree or I can prop it up against another headstone and angle the sun just right so that it f shines on the front of the stone that I'm interested in. And it makes a world of difference just using tools like that. You can do the same thing with a sheet of tin foil on a piece of cardboard if you want to. I mean, it's, you know, um, one of the tricks my dad taught me, my dad is a photographer, and I was having a particularly difficult time with, with a marker. It was actually a wooden post that's in a cemetery marking off one of the sections, mm -hmm. but it's engraved. So I know there's writing on there, I just couldn't figure it out. Um, so he actually joined up with me and we got a big black tablecloth and we propped it over the top of the camera and the marker and shone a light and, and then he flashed a flashlight at it or one of those camping lanterns. Mm -hmm. I think we used both actually. We tried both to, to see which one would be best and, and completely took out all of the exterior background distortion, the light, everything and just mm -hmm. put this thing in its own isolated little space and took the picture that way and it, it worked beautifully. Um, I think there's lots of tricks like that. It's pretty easy to find them. Um, there's lots of resources online if you just Google, you know, uh, right. cemetery photography. Um, there's a couple blogs, and I know you have some that you wanted to bring up. Yeah. Um, actually, we can go ahead and start talking about a little bit about the different websites. Yeah, and let's do that. Resources. Um, first thing I was going to talk about was uh, the Association of Gravestones studies. You said that they have some good uh, uh, pages and information mm -hmm. on it for people who are doing research and and restoration or just research? No, it is. It's it's everything. So it's okay. conservation, preservation, education, and then interpretation. And I'm reading that right off their website, okay. so I don't have that memorized. <laughs> um, but it is a, it's a membership society, so you get more if you join, obviously, but they also have an and they have books that you can purchase and field guides and all sorts of wonderful resources. So 
Um, they're uh, probably, I would say, if you're interested in serious cemetery work, they would be one of your first stops. Okay. Be, at least in my opinion. Oh, they sound really interesting. I'm going to have to go check them out because I hadn't yeah. heard about them until I, the one I'd always heard about, and which I'm sure majority of people who have any sort of genealogy background is the Association of Graveyard Rabbits. Mm -hmm. which Absolutely. I, like, <laughs> <awesome> name. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, if you don't know who they are, you definitely need to go check them out. So yes. uh, they are sure. a good resource in addition to the other association to get you started and get you going. Um, and they're a gr great bunch of people. There's a lot of people who do blogs. I you know they have a Facebook group, and they're just a um, a fun group of people to to know. Um, the other one, which is one that I found today, and you hadn't heard of, and I hope I say this right, was the Chikora Foundation Inc. from Columbia, South Carolina, and it's C H I C O R A, and they do they have um, uh, cemetery conservation work from their homepage. And they do, you know, working in cemeteries, conservation, maintenance, cleaning, uh, disaster planning. Uh, it was a very interesting site, but they have a section called Cemetery Forms where they have all different types of forms. So when you go visit a cemetery, mm -hmm. you, you can download it and uh, take it with you. So, you know, how to in, uh, record markers, how to record locations. Gosh, I'm looking at the website right now, which is why I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. They also have, uh, uh, if you have, you know, damaged, fallen, or monuments in disrepair, how you can um, manage it and keep it, you know, if you're keeping track of how it's uh, of, of all the different repairs and everything, it's um, vandalism forms, um, and then there's this one called determine the height of a monument with a clinometer. Do you know what a clinometer is? Because I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. I would just probably use a tape measure. Um. <laughs> well, it says this one is when you have tall obelisks or mausoleums. Oh, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, the taller they get, the harder the tape measure would be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of yeah. short, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I found it a very interesting and informative website, particularly if anyone is going out to do research or is helping with conservation at a local cemetery. This one seems to have everything in one spot. That's great. Um, let's see here. And then um, a blog I definitely wanted to highlight is uh, the one by Midge Frizzell. Uh, granite in my blood. It's an yeah. absolutely fantastic blog. If you like cemetery research, if you're in graveyards and and how to read them, and and she d she just does amazing work. Do you have another blog that you like? Uh, you know, I follow hers pretty religiously, actually. Yeah. Um, I follow Midge, but I also follow a couple of Facebook groups, and I I you know I don't have a ton of time for blog reading on, anymore, unfortunately, but. Yeah. There's a couple of cemetery groups that I really like. Um, most of them kind of just generally post interesting cemetery photographs, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the engagement in the group. But there are a couple that um, are are specific to researchers, um, and there was one I was going to – it's the Cemetery Inscriptions, Epitaphs, and Symbols. Um, on Facebook. It's a closed group, so you have to ask permission to join, but it's quite interesting some of the conversations that get going there. So um, I'm very much into the symbolism that's on headstones. I, I love fraternal societies. It's one of my areas of research that I'm really passionate about, and so the more I can learn about why something is engraved into a headstone, the happier I am. So I really like that one. That one's one that I, I pay close attention to. I have to say that's one of the things I find myself more and more, especially in, in the area I am, since there are little bitty old cemeteries everywhere. Yeah. Just yeah. randomly killing time, walking through one. And uh, I really like looking at not only the script and, and how beautiful mm -hmm. the artwork is, but the different emblems, symbols, all of that that you can find. Um, I was uh, last time I was in Williamsburg and I Colonial Williamsburg. If you walk on the main Duke of Gloucester Street, there's a church there, and you can go through the yard, 
hard. And they have a lot of large tombs, very ornately decorated. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have heraldry on them. Yeah. They have symbols. They have skulls and crossbones. They have uh, trees. They have flowers. And they're just beautiful to look at and try to figure out what the significance is, you know? Yeah. And and I think with some of them, you know, depending on the age and the era and the location and all of those different factors, every symbol could mean something. Mm -hmm. You know, the type of flower or the type of leaf that they use, or it could just be decorative. Right. Um, you know, I was in, we were in um, Cheyenne, Wyoming, a couple weeks ago, just messing around. And of course, we went to the cemetery, and there was this beautiful Celtic cross. It was probably 12 or 14 feet tall, mm -hmm. and so I was just fascinated by this thing. And it was actually surrounded by priests of a particular religion, and that so it was this huge monument, mm -hmm. and it was it was absolutely gorgeous. So I took pictures of all angles, and I brought it home, and I started to piece it together, and realized that every single different design on this cross and all four sides are covered from bottom to top mm -hmm. has some kind of significance so I've been kind of slowly piecing it together um, it's it, trying to find the right you know to make sure that it matches that kind of it gets to be a little tricky sometimes because bit different people have different interpretations but right. um, but it's just fascinating to to know that someone took the time to not only carve out all of this beautiful work but also to plan and coordinate how you know I mean I would have to imagine that somebody took the time to sit and say well this has to go towards the top and this one goes further down and this one goes on the left or the right or the back of the front and like I mean yeah it's <laughs> I could talk about stuff like that forever actually but it's just you know it's just fascinating to me that that you know that that was the kind of work and detail and thought that went into some of these markers yeah, I have to admit, um, when I visited Edinburgh a, a while ago now, uh, when we were at the castle there, walking through the car park uh, and seeing all the very large monuments and mm -hmm. Celtic cross, and they were just absolutely beautiful, and, and the designs and taking the time and reading about it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I was going to say something, and now it just slipped my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say before before we move on to anything else, I wanted to bring up a couple books that I use oh, yeah. for yeah. Um, headstone symbolism. Um, so actually, I have three books. I was prepared, Shannon. I got them already Yay. and everything. Um, the first one that I'm going to talk about is your guide to cemetery research, uh, Sharon D. Bartolo Carmack. I wanted to make sure I get that right. It's a bit older, um, so some of it's dated. Trying to get it in the camera. There we go. There but go. it's source for cemetery research so and and I I believe that these are out of print I I may be wrong about that but um, um I know let me, let me still, double check I know vendors check. still have them there's still inventory out there but they can sometimes be hard to find um for some reason I thought I saw it on Amazon today let me check okay oh really <laughs> okay yeah. Um, so I could be totally wrong. All right. So then my second book that I'm going to talk about while she looks it up is called Saints, Signs, and Symbols. It's a 1970s publication um, that I actually picked up like at a used bookstore or something at some point. And it's actually written for religious reference. Um, it was never intended, in, in, as far as I can tell, to be any have to do anything with cemeteries. But it's got fantastic diagrams in it, so you can see exactly what means it's very very clear it's very easy to read symbology um, symbolism but but can kind of get an idea let's see there's the crosses so it's it's a good one um, and that is by W L Wood post Ooh, I like that one and I know I really I w grabbed it off the shelf and I thought oh and it cost me you know like a dollar or something um, oh my and this is from Morehouse publishing and it's copyright 1974 so this is a good one. And then the one that I actually had to actually ironically go to my car and get out of my cemetery bag because it that's where it lives usually is my favorite and a lot of people's favorite stories in stone. Um, this is written by Douglas Keister and he's a photographer so all of the work in here is, is, is beautiful. In fact here's a that Celtic cross is a lot like the one I saw in Cheyenne so he has a whole page about that that one. Um, but he's done most of the photography for these books. He has several books like this. 
um, and he goes into a, a fair amount of detail. It's not all inclusive. I mean, you, you know, I mean, I, I think it would be almost impossible to include everything um, you would ever find in a cemetery, but it is quite good in that he gives very concise um, descriptions and he gives quite a bit of information. My favorite section, of course, is the fraternal section, fraternal societies. Um, so you can see, hopefully, like okay. there's a GAR symbol. And, and I like the way that he does the work because sometimes you can see the whole stone and sometimes you just get the actual, like the, the highlight of what he's talking about. So it's a very good book and it's easy and it's small and it literally fits into your back pocket if you're wearing the right jeans. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's, this is a good one and, and I think just about anybody who sells history and genealogy related references sells this book. Um, it might be a little bit more than you think it's worth if you just pick it up off the shelf, but um, I, I tell you it's worth every penny that you pay and then some. So those are my three that I go to all the time. Okay, and I just checked Amazon, and it must be being reprinted because oh. you can buy uh, your guide to cemetery research, um, new and used, on Amazon. Fantastic. That's good news, actually. So, I, yeah. yeah, and it, they range in price, so... Right. It's, it's new at $65, and you can get the used ones for a variety of prices. Oh, yeah, so. sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever you want to try. So, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a great reference. So if you're into cemeteries at all, you should definitely start with Sharon's um, Guide to Cemetery Research. Great. Great. Um, I'm, it's actually one I'm now drooling over so yeah you, sh you should get it yeah <laughs> <laughs> even if it's a used copy I buy used books all the time from Amazon oh, and, yeah. and um, you know it, it's but it's a f you know the only thing I was flipping through today because it's been a it's been a little while since I've read it I'm gonna have to go through it again she does talk about gravestone rubbings and that kind of thing so she does give you the proper techniques which is which is wonderful um, uh, but, you know, like we talked about earlier, I don't know that it's really all that necessary anymore. Right. But, well, it, you know. it says it came out in 2002. So yeah. That's, yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a tad yeah. bit dated, but not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about? I, I wanted to talk a bit about, um, for, for a few minutes, uh, the subject I was thinking about was um, all the amazing different types of information you can find on tombstones uh, and, and some um, I I know you know most people you know think of a tombstone you're gonna get you know basic information you know most of the time you'll find a name and you'll find a death date a lot of the time you'll find a birth date mm -hmm. um, really really vary I have seen you know things where it's things where it's just son <laughs> daughter <Yeah. laughs> and so you're not helping me here <laughs> right <laughs> um, and then I we were um, I was in New Kent Virginia a couple years ago and it was an in-ground uh, tomb so they had the solid uh, stone slab on top of a top of the mausoleum, and it was the it was his life history. You know, it was oh. I can't remember his name now, but it was he. This is where he was born. These were his parents. He immigrated to Virginia on this date, and he married this person first, and this person oh second. <laughs> And and this is what he did in the colony, and it had his family coat of arms on the bottom of it. And I was like, why couldn't that be my family? No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> but but I think a lot of people um, they wonder why uh, anyone would want to go traipsing around as my as my children put it when we drive by a cemetery. Look, mom, dead people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what? What is the the I guess the draw? What is the the calling behind it? I, I mean, I just find them fascinating. All the, the differences you can see, the different styles, the the beauty and the artwork behind it. Absolutely. But the, the, the bits of history that you find are fascinating mm -hmm. to me. And um, I don't know if that's the the same with you or if you had uh, a different experience. 
I think actually I can speak to that really well. It's one of the reasons that I like the Breckenridge Cemetery so much. Um, you know, I did tours there for five years, so I got to know the property probably better than just about anybody else in Breckenridge. Um, and I, I say that, you know, with a grain of salt, of course, because who knows. Um, it's a 20-acre cemetery. It's it's quite overgrown. It's, you know, it's not man landscaped. There's nobody there mowing the lawn. There is no grass at that elevation. It's quite high up in the Rocky Mountains. And it's absolutely stunning, and it's peaceful. And one of the things that I like about it so much is that you can go from person to person and tell the history of the town of Breckenridge without ever leaving the cemetery. You know, most people go to Breckenridge and they, they spend a lot of time on Main Street. It's a very touristy area. There's a ski resort there. So they they go to Main Street and they see all the historic buildings and they go to the museums. But if you go to the cemetery and spend an hour, you can you can quite literally learn the whole history of the town from, you know, I, the guy that was involved with, you know, the criminal cases that maybe he shouldn't have been involved with and then that guy was mayor and at the same time members of his fraternal society were also other political figures and so everything went their way for a while and did and it's that small town feeling because it is a small town but it's very much you know that guy is related to that guy because he married his sister and then she he had a affair with him, and then there was a murder, and then, yeah, and it's just, it's all connected. Every story you tell, you can go back to somebody else that you've already looked at. Um, I think that's one of the draws for me, is, is it really is, a cemetery really does tell the history of a community within the confines of that property. Um, and you get to know the cemetery well enough, and the people that are there well enough, and, and you learn that pretty quickly. Um, I know that there are lots of people who write books about particular cemeteries that they find interesting. There's one that was published about a town not far from me. Um, and, and all it is is just one in a brief biographical profile uh, of the person that's buried. If they'd done just a bit more digging, just looked a little bit further, they could have really tied those stories together and figured out how everybody was intertwined. And that, to me, is the story. You know, right. it's it's not about where they spend eternity. It's about what the story is behind that stone. Yeah, in my, you know, in my experience, I think cemeteries are probably one of the most moving places I've ever been. And I will go back to your opening statements. You were talking about visiting cemeteries with mother. And I, we used to do that too. Our family, annual family event was Memorial Day. And we would all go to the family cemetery and clean all the headstones. And, and see everybody, and then we go to Uncle Boone's house and have a potluck dinner. That was Memorial Day every day for my entire life. <laughs> and my family is still doing that up in Washington. And and that's where the story started for me. I, that was where it's that, like, oh, well, I knew that person. Even as a little kid, I'm thinking, I knew that person that's laying over to that person down the hill. I mean, you know, our family is like 75% of the cemetery. So... It's pretty easy to connect the dots yeah. in a situation like that. But I think it's a great way even to, you know, like you were saying, to introduce your children to this particular fe part of our field is, is saying, you know, you are related to almost everybody here and having them right. turn on the light bulb that that headstone is actually a person, right, a life. And and that's how I, I mean, my, uh, my maternal grandmother, uh, my grandfather died before I was born. Loved flags. Sorry, other people know them as irises, but I grew up with those. <laughs> with the name of the flower is a flag. <laughs> <laughs> and my my grandmother grew them in her her front garden. And as soon as the irises were up and blooming, every Friday we would during the summertime take new irises to the grave. And she would sit there and she would clean the headstone and pull yeah. back the grass. And, you know, as a 9, 10, 11-year-old, I didn't necessarily understand. But, you know, because by that time he had been gone 15 years, you know. But she was still, that was her moment. And I would wander the headstones up and down the rows. And, you know, some of them had the little pictures where, you know, you would lift the metal and there would be the picture yeah. on them. And, yeah. and I would see the common surnames from the family and several times, you know, usually at least once or twice a summer. 
she would walk with me and especially to the older sections mm -hmm. and tell me now this was your third great grandparents and this is how you know they came from here and this was this family story so hearing those from my grandmother because she had heard them from her grandparents was right. she wonderful way to connect not only family history but to learn from the stones because she would tell me if there was information missing right. um, why why things were done in a certain way why certain people were buried next to others um, who was in the new part of the cemetery and why versus being with the family plot so it was I think if you can make it a family outing and if you can get some of those those stories especially if you know you have a family area, mm -hmm. um, I think that's wonderful. Uh, not everybody can do that, obviously, because right. we move and we migrate and we move across the country. But yeah. just, but you know, I, I think um, if people are very interested in doing headstone and cemetery research and learning about it, and, you know, even if they just want to do, like, be helpers on billion graves or find a grave or whatever, right. having that yeah. information and knowing how to document it and having the respect and the resources is a good thing to have. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for those people who, who aren't in an area where they have a family cemetery, like anything close to them. One of the things that I do, because I don't really have a lot of family in Colorado. I've had a couple of ancestors here, but nothing significant. Um, so, you know, but I still love to go to cemeteries. I'll walk through a, and I'll take pictures and I'm almost always looking specifically for fraternal society symbols. Mm -hmm. But that's part of the fun for me is trying to kind of unravel that and make sure that I, I'm quizzing myself as I go. Oh, you know, I'm walking down the aisles and, and seeing how many I can recognize. But at the same time, I find someone interesting and I take them home and I just do a couple hours of research just because I want to know a little bit more about them. And so it's a great way to learn about the community you live in now and its history. It's a great family to the, the joy of cemeteries. And it's a great way for you to keep your research skills honed and practice new methods because maybe you're going to end up researching in an area that you've never researched before if you follow some person that you randomly found in a cemetery. It's a, it's a, your skills as a researcher active and, and keep increasing your abilities. Right. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. I love doing that stuff. <laughs> if I had more time, <laughs> it's just fun. <laughs> it is fun. <laughs> well, do you have any last-minute thoughts or comments you'd like to say before we close this evening? Cemeteries are fun. That's right. Go to them and and give yourself time. Don't just go in and take a picture for find a grave. Actually, go in and explore the cemetery and be in that place and let the emotions happen. Mm -hmm. That's how I would close tonight. I think that's perfect. <laughs> so on that note, um, we will end for this evening. And I just want to remind everybody that next month we will be meeting in the afternoon on Wednesday, November 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to be talking with Jen Alford about quick and easy family genealogical projects. See, mm. it's almost the holiday season. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, right. <laughs> Get your gone. <laughs> <laughs> and Jen Alford's very um, good at that kind of thing, so it should be a good discussion. <laughs> that's right. And if anybody has any suggestions, I'm starting to put together the 2015 calendar. So if you would like to hear any thing in particular or learn about something new, drop me a line on the Next Gen Facebook page and I will see what I can do. Uh, thanks, Jen, for joining us this evening. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me, Shannon. You're very welcome. And I'll see everybody next month. Bye. Good night.